Cheers. And welcome to the uh, our little nook here on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, I know I've changed the name of this podcast a few times now, but uh, this is the last one, I promise. Promise. Um, <laughs> we're calling the show The Nook now. has a little bit of a background. Uh, needless to say, it was our little area where we could trust our friends when there was stuff going on at Libertopia that we needed to get away from. Yeah. Super secret, by the way. Yeah, the nobody nook. knew. The Nook. But if, it you, was, if you're in the know, you're in the know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a place of trust and understanding. Uh, that, that was the main thing about it. A circle of trust? Yes. yes. Circle, circle of trust. Circle of trust. I'm bringing all of you into our circle of trust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you were in the know, you knew the Nook. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you were in the know, you knew the Nook. I like that rhymes. That the is, is the alliter- just about that's, does. Yeah. that's alliteration. Alliteration. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of like this podcast. So you're in the know. There you go, Christy. That's right. <laughs> um, today I'm drinking grapefruit sculpin. It's uh, much like the other sculpins we've had on here, only this one tastes like grapefruit. And if it's and it's still really good. If it has sculpin in the name, it's probably pretty damn good. Whatever the you know, yeah, uh, variant on it might be. Well, let's face it, sculpin's a pretty good IPA. Yeah, solid as solid. Um, I'm drinking, uh, apparently what, uh, Ian has mentioned is, uh, it's by, um, uh, Prohibition, uh, brewery in San Francisco. Uh, it's the Big Daddy IPA. That's really popular up there from what he's saying. So, it's good. I like it. I dig it. It's not, not gonna lie. It's not the best IPA I've ever had, but it's, you know, it's solid. It's not like, it's not like I'm, I'm drinking and be like, oh, this is a horrible IPA. It's, it's a good IPA. So I give it a, I don't know, a 7 out of 10. It's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I would concur. I've had that before. Mm-hmm. It's a good brewery yeah. overall, but their IP is just kind of mediocre. Yeah. Uh, kombucha. Uh, lemon, uh, let's see, a ginger lemon raspberry. Nice. Reeds. That sounds good. Kombucha. It does sound delicious. Yeah. Fruity. <laughs> Likewise, classic synergy. The high octane, higher alcohol percentage uh, variant, pretty good. Cool. I've mm-hmm. had it before. Delicious. Yeah. Water mm-hmm. tonight. Definitely good. Water. Uh-huh. I water. bet that's water, Christy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You're actually. Uh, they actually are supposed to card you when you buy this. Really? Card- yeah. Wow. They never yeah. do wow. though. That's right. the thing that's really funny. I bought right. it a whole bunch of times and. I still get carded every now and then, so I kind of expect it sometimes. And it, it says right, like, right on the label, it says, like, must be 21. And they're always like, Because they always pick it up and look at it and be like, 1%, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, okay, fine. Well, don't but, some places, like, it comes up on the computer that you have to card them or something? Uh, yeah, it does. But mm, I, I guess in my local market, that mm. doesn't happen. You know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a small market, and... and because I'm in there at least a couple times a week, I just don't think they care. That's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, they just don't care. They're like, yeah, whatever, okay. And it's silly. He's obviously going gray, so you're, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you're kombucha, whatever. Yeah, and I think it's only like five tenths of one percent. Right. <laughs> like half a percent. So. Just enough to get that good fermentation going on there that works really well with your system, you know. Uh, speaking of Libertopia... Uh, Libertopi is coming up again. Yep. You're all invited. You should come by, meet the group. That's November 14th? 13th. 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 Uh, November 13th through 16th. 13th through 16th. Okay, there we go. I think they're actually No, the 13th, 13th. is, yeah. uh, is uh, on the 13th there's, uh, you know, registration and then there's a thing in the evening. But all the, all the talks, most of the talks start on Friday. The talks and everybody else who has a booth should be there on you know, the 14th. Is if the you have a booth or something, you should be there on the 13th during setup. Right, but you should have it like, all put up and ready to go by the next day. You know, like, hey, this is the day, it's, here it is. You know, if you, yeah, you I think most people put their stuff out on the 13th. If you want to do some trading, you know, better have it ready by the next day for sure. So look uh, for the nook. Yes, yes. The, the, the nook, nook. The, the nook will be there. Yeah, that's for sure. 
There is going to be. You uh, may not be able to find it. <laughs> we'll, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> the nook you might be able to find, but the cranny you'll never find that. Um, there's going to be. Um, I just got that. The at li- <laughs> at Libertopia, there will be uh, Agarist Ales. Yes. Which will be excellent brewery, by the way. You know, one of one of the best I've ever had, to be honest. Uh, you know, it's uh, they're going to be serving. Uh, Liberto IPA mm-hmm. and Morning Wood, well, both uh, both of which I've had is delicious. Uh, of course, we have to keep in mind the the, the situation. You really uh, like their Morning Wood, huh? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, because of the situation, we, you know, we we should mention that you know uh, terms and conditions may apply. Void were for, were prohibited. Not available in all fifty states, etc. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah, but it's uh, it's good, and you can find it, and you should be able to acquire it fairly easily with some ability to trade for something. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, you know. Come, come, come talk to one of us. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to figure out how you can get some of Agri Sales beer. Point you in the right direction, as they say, quote yes. unquote. Yeah. Uh, tonight, so we're going to be talking about, about like alternatives to the prison system uh, on a free market what what that might entail, what that could entail, that kind of thing. Um, John, why don't you kind of give us yeah, so like, a quick idea of what you think. Right, so these are one of those concepts that uh, many people get stuck on. Well, what about crime and what do you do with criminals? And, that and, and the roads. Right, well, roads <laughs> and <laughs> That and the roads. And, uh, and, and, and the roads. The management of of hard criminals, let's say, and uh, so yeah, I thought that was a good a good discussion to have, and and what that might look like, and uh, I think we're at a point where technology would actually enable uh, society to to manage that complex issue without without the state. Yeah, and. Um, Essentially, what we're talking about is a a, a voluntary uh, situation where uh, someone who has been deemed an ag- uh, a threat to society or, or to yeah a threat to society. So, what would you do with someone like that? Essentially, you'd have privately run hotels, for lack of better reason, you know, where they're allowed um, if they choose to participate in the system then they can still have their life they could be productive and they go into a condominium type setting where security is much lower you don't have the the rape culture you don't have the the uh, prison guard the guy guy who anyway you don't have prison guards who are tripping on authority per se it's much more of a, a permissive environment where uh, someone goes to live uh, until their restitution is paid or if they're deemed uh, unable to be uh, uh, rehabilitated, if you will, say they're a child molester or something. It's in everybody's interest that they go somewhere. It's in that, it would be in that person's interest because they are given a maximum amount of freedom while still being cordoned off, if you will, from the broader so- from broader society. And the technology that would allow us to do that, for instance, is sort of like the Amber Alert system. But uh, whereas if someone chooses not to do that, then they could live as an outlaw and their information, you know, goes out on the on the interweb mm-hmm. in a split second everybody realized oh such and such molester you know uh, is on the loose he chose you know either didn't didn't come home you know or didn't whatever the case uh, yeah. chose not to not to uh, to enter into voluntary uh, hmm. what do you call that incarceration if you will it's almost like he's kind of an oxymoron but uh, yeah anyway yeah, I, that, there's enough there to run with. 
<laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I, I think you, you kind of hit it there that maybe incarceration isn't the right word. It's, it's more of a, okay, so if you don't agree to these terms and conditions, uh, in this, uh, not terms and conditions because that sounds like an insurance policy, but in a way maybe <laughs> maybe option. it is. And, but it's the an option. Yeah, but the alternative is, is guns and badges and stuff. So it's like I don't particularly like insurance companies either, but... I'd rather deal with an insurance company than I would somebody who has a badge and well, you know. the, 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 in, the whole insurance com the whole insurance spectrum right now is all owned by one company anyway. Exactly. Ultimately. It's, it, it's all very So it, yeah. it's very much it, it's not like an insurance company would be on a free market. Right. And also right. like the alternative, right, is not in the, not necessarily guns and badges, but the alternative is being completely ostracized, right? So like yeah. once you're name comes up attached with something like an amber alert uh your your identities spread everywhere and it's li very likely that someone sees uh you know uh molester or, or rapist or whatever that there's mm. going to be a high extremely high percentage of people who won't associate with them won't, won't feed them won't, yeah, won't give right. them housing won't give them employment so the better option is probably to take, you know, uh, a stint in the Hilton. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ex exactly. You know, I mean, that's that's the thing. You, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I kind of see it as, you know, there may be kind of like, uh, as weird as it sounds, something like like they have on Amazon or eBay or something. There'd be like, you know, like a rating of like this person has a certain amount of, of credibility. Right. And if you're accused of something and you don't respond to the ac accusation, obviously you're you're standing in, in whatever somebody's metric that you may subscribe to or, or pay a subscription to. Uh, I just said the same thing, repeated myself there. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if, um, you know, some, somebody who you're, who you're, uh, you know, set, you're, you're having your, your, maybe your, I guess your file with, for lack of a better way to describe it, if you're not responding to a legitimate accusation from somebody where they've actually right. provided evidence of you have committed what we consider to be a crime, right? And you don't respond to it, you don't stand I'm, to be stand to, to yeah to at least the charges, right? Yeah. At the barest minimal, say I didn't do this. If right. you don't even respond to it at all, obviously your kind of your things gonna go down. Now there there's there's an issue of like you hypothetically if somebody is is somebody that is doing something that maybe. Uh, Maybe somebody who's got a whole lot of money may not want them to do. They could inundate them with with you know demands of you're not responding to whatever Who, charges. But at the same time, you if if there you're getting that many charges, you could also come up with your own evidence and make copies of it and present that to the public of these people are harassing me too. So there you know that that's the other option of that of trying to think of if somebody was to was to be uh, you know. Uh, some sort of you know malfactor and you know trying to harass somebody you could prove that they were harassing you rather than just you know right okay let's let's say i had an agreement with somebody and this person just kind of like stole all my, my money and they now cannot be found mm -hmm. and so what's justice there where where could i i mean i can't find it now either but <laughs> without paying lots of money to try to find somebody mm -hmm. but um who's going to pay for even this alternative system well, that would well, be. It. Go ahead. Um, just, yeah. Uh, I was first going to say that David Friedman has a really excellent, uh, has done some really excellent research in that subject, and he's putting it into a book called uh, something like "Legal Systems Very Different from Our Own." But you can find the transcript online on his website, and I suggest checking out some of his because those those. Uh, he, he explains a lot of uh, really good Is he and be historical a ways. I don't know. He has okay. in the past. I know. I okay. don't know about this All year. Right. He's been there a couple times, yeah. and, he, and he's a you know a very uh, you know agreeable gentleman. Yeah, that's and Milton's son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. He's he's, he's uh, Milton Freeman's son, and and in in case anybody has issues with Milton Freeman, me included, uh, David Freeman is 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 much more. To the voluntary mindset than than his father for sure, and you know will say you know you know point blank that the, the state is is fraud and theft and is violence mm -hmm. you know whereas Milton Freeman would always kind of be 
dodgy about it, which is the word of the day, apparently. Dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the word dodgy, dodgy in the children's television workshop, right? And everybody's supposed to scream now, right? Yeah. Ooh, or there's going to be, like, water or slime that comes down from above the camera or something. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, the one I really like, though, is the insurance method, where you would pay monthly into okay. an insurance company right. who would then, if you were robbed or or something like that, you would file a claim with them. Right. Uh, just like you would if your car was damaged or something. And then they make the decision based on cost-benefit analysis what, whether to pursue idea. the like criminal that. and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but you, you couldn't do it after the fact. You couldn't get an insurance policy after it's done. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, then that's, yeah. I like insurance being solutions, you know. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I, I got a question. About, did, were you going to say something? No, else? I was just going to say the whole system would change because I, I think less people would be incarcerated, just for one, because we would look at um, non, you know, no, um, no victim, no crime. You know, that would be then we just cut off 90% of the people that were, are incarcerated. Right. And so you'd, we'd really only be dealing with the the, right. the the people legitimate, who harm exactly right, the ones that crime. really harm people right. and so everything would just the whole thing would be very different and and I think the resources could actually um, voluntarily I'm not quite quite sure about also, this voluntary thing where where it, I'm just not quite sure right, I don't understand right. it I don't well, know if they would well, they buy it, it you also know? like the systemic pressure for people to seek uh, criminal means right to to eke out a, uh, an existence or whatever that's also gone right under a voluntarist well, model right yeah, when it's no longer easier to right so so wonder. that's that's should be recognized as well so we're talking about the the motivators for crime just falling away right, right? yeah there'll still be those who are biologically yeah. wired for it you'll still have uh, you know serious crime there's no we're not talking about utopia but just the numbers the sheer numbers of crimes and uh and and worse in the existing system uh people sitting in prison for nonviolent crimes and technically even many who didn't commit you know committed victimless crimes you know well and people who even people who committed legitimate crimes how is sticking them in a cage yeah a yeah. And then stealing money from other people to pay for right. his right, right. Ha so just living. How the, how is that justice? Yeah. In the just culture, you know? it's in yeah. the prison. You right. know, like yeah. it doesn't help yeah. anybody, yeah. right? We've already, yeah. we already got some prisons now that have been that have been privatized. There, we've got imprisoned people working as employees for certain companies, either right. insurance, you know, either insurance companies or safety companies or or even computer companies. I mean, so I mean, instead of just, I mean. They're going to have to work when they're in this Hilton, so to speak, to keep some of the money going. And as far as payments for, <clears throat> as far as losing, you know, other people losing from criminals that disappear, I mean, why not, you know, in a way create funds or, you know, an account or an escrow type setup. Well, that's where the insurance the would sits come there in. If I had an and, insurance and as, account. And it yeah. insures them. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. they, do their right. they do their time, so to speak, to seize time, but... They have their time at the Hilton, and then, you know, if they're on good behavior, well, they they, could actually that, that work money can in the actually Hilton, benefit them you know? in the end if they, you know, if they do come back, right. as opposed to disappear and cause right. create another crime. And truly, we could right. have an, a system where rehabilitation is a real, right. you know, uh, possibility instead of, like, thinking we're going to rehabilitate someone in the current system, you know, where... Oh, we're just creating more criminals right. in that system. Right. Well, pride. I mean, they're you know, learning work, work how to be criminals. Gives a piece, some, yeah, work yeah. gives someone a lot it's of pride. Real also work, work and achieving and accomplishing right. things. Right, real and work, and real wages. Like right. That's they, why crimes are committed, yeah. because they feel useless yeah. to society. Yeah. To society or, it's uh, a little bit different, but it, it dovetails nicely with this, is also the restorative justice concept, where you have communities working with uh, victims and the perpetrator. Yep. Uh, so, they have so the they community have to see is taking the, a little bit yeah, of the onus right. as well, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 identifying some of this systemic pressure that goes on that the community, uh, in a wider sense, is also shares some responsibility mm -hmm. to it. So, yeah, there's, that's another aspect that kind of humanizing, fits in right, humanizing absolutely. the whole thing. You know, right. you you hurt somebody. There's actually people behind it. You know, and and having having maybe even. Um, having people um, uh, 
victims and the criminals, you know, get in and and talk. Right. You know, have a conversation. How it's, d- a, it's a more empathetic system, yeah. I think, too. Right. Um, with uh, with NBC, I've, we've talked about this before, Marsha Rosenberg. Uh, you you want to build a culture of empathy, uh, and and just that alone Absolutely, would right, eliminate yeah. a lot of crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know. If I people sp- are are dealt with empathetically, right, right. I, I, how many? And you're empathetic with yourself about exactly what you are thinking and feeling. Right. I've spoken to a number of, more so in the older generations, but how many are just looking at, well, if you're in prison, it's because you deserve it. Yeah. And you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like, yeah. They're We're like, all taught hard, that, it's hard to I was that. taught it. Right. I was yeah. taught that. People yeah. say that, well, you know, the criminal's yeah. blood in jail, you know. Yeah. But with the fine, you know. Yeah, or, or have an attitude about people on the street, like, yeah, get them off the street, you know, even if it means trumping something up, just get them off the street, you mm-hmm. know. It's like, man... You know, I mean, like the story you told us. Right, exactly, right. And I, I, that's a different story. <laughs> but yeah, it, I heard something else just recently that, that mirrored that. So that's kind of what. What was the out. story? Uh, in, in a. In well, uh, two stories. And one was uh, someone shared with me uh, a story about a police officer admitting to them uh, that they would plant stuff on street people just to get them off the street huh? right yeah oh no you know there, there, was, wow. there was a there san jose was a, to wow. be specific but uh <laughs> and then another one uh just the other day uh, an elderly friend of mine uh was i was telling him this story as well and his immediate response before he saw where it was going was like yeah get him off the street <laughs> you know what i mean and then mm. and then once the story developed a little bit more you, you could see that uh, maybe it, it did connect with them empathetically to some degree, at least a little bit. There was a you, you mentioned that I, I will, I will get, I'll get back on on topic real quick, but you mentioned the the, the planting, you know, on people that th- you go back. I think it, w- it was within the past five years, uh, an officer, detective in the NYPD, during a trial under oath, all that sort of stuff, straight up said he goes, yeah, you used to plant drugs on people all the time. Specifically, he said cocaine. That's how much detail he went in. He goes, yeah, we used to plant coke on people all the time because it's easy. You just throw it on the ground yeah, and fucking, yeah. oh, is that yours? It was right next <laughs> to you. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, they do it all the time. That's the thing that's like, not not just like, they didn't say like every once in a while. They said, he said specifically all the time. Anyway, but to get back, you know, what we're talking about, you know, the different, you know, you know, we're talking about like, well, how does it work now, and how do we want to work in the future? You know, you mentioned empathy, and uh, what I've been saying like the, the past, like I don't know. I guess when I really started kind of thinking about it more of it as my focus lately, month or so, something like that is, is empathy is going to be the thing that saves the world. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, we we've all kind of come to the conclusion based or at least most of us have or 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 some variant of this you know or, or, you know through our 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 search for what we think is going on in the world or or our or what we believe to be the truth or and and all that is that at one point or another this this paradigm we're in right now will not exist and after that what's going to happen well we don't know what's going to happen after that but we do know during that transition it's going to be rough <laughs> because we've got so much built up on just you know ones and zeros and paper and debt which is backed up by ones and zeros it's all fake it's just you know thin air sort of stuff but what's going to get us through that transition is be able to is the ability to say you know that guy over there who's you know having a hard time getting by well you know i can't give him everything i have and i may not even be able to give him a room in my house or something but you know hey here's five bucks as an example you know comparison to whatever may be worth that at the time take this do what you can with it hopefully someone down the road will also be able to do the same thing you know that's the thing is is to emphasize that's what i try to emphasize is like listen like it's going to be rough and it's already bad right now it's already really bad right now you think about a you know the uh I, i People, you know, kids get out of high school, people 20 to, to 28, something like that. An entry-level job, you're not getting paid well. 
you know, what is, and I'm not, trust me, I'm not the type who's going to be like, we should raise the minimum wage, mm -hmm. but what minimum wage is right now is not something that's going to get you by. It's not. You're, you know, I mean, I, I think there's something coming out the other day that McDonald's had made a worksheet of, like, how to balance your budget for employees, and they gave it to them. <laughs> and one of the columns was, your second job. And it's like, oh, so you've already <laughs> admitted that I can't make my money working here. So, like, that's the thing. It's just it, it, it's the ability to put yourself in another's shoes right. to say, how, how are we going to get through this? And, to, and so to equate that with... You know what we're talking about? Well, well, how to 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 equalize things, get justice in the sense of the scales. You know, uh, you know, you're saying like, oh, you know, uh, they you know they should stay in some sort of uh, facility, a, a, a hotel. Uh, it, you know, it, it sounds pretty much like a hotel. It may not be the Ritz, but you're not getting the jail bologna sandwiches, which are probably not really bologna and <laughs> may be meat, may not be, you know, well, like that, background. you know, as you currently may get in a right. holding cell, you know, in, in transition. Here's your food. What is this? It doesn't smell like meat. It's bologna. Oh, right. you know, you might actually get some actual, you know, beef protein of some well, sort. Or, that, that's another element yeah. you bring up, too, is that there could be a competitive element to this exactly right? so you yeah could have which facility you know c sort of competing for where the bad guys go you know what i'm saying right like uh you know this yeah whatever you know basically that would uh give incentive for those facilities to to be the one that that your uh that your bottom percentage whatever you know criminal element wants to go to more or less and part of that concept that we that we think of as you know innocent until proven guilty is, hey, um, we're acknowledging the fact that you may not have done this. You know, <laughs> this could be you could have gotten caught up in something and you didn't do. That's that's the concept of it. At least that's what we've been told. And it, and it, and if I believe that is to be a justifiable system of, you're accused of something. Well, we can't. We're not going to try to you know put you up or throw you before you've actually had your. Your, your fair share, uh, that's empathy right there. Saying like, you may have thought, you know, done this. Let's 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 go through the motions first before we just say you've done it. You know, like right. we should make sure that you've done it. No uh, witch trials. Already beating somebody exactly. senseless before they've gone to a court. Yes, court yes, beating or, somebody or, senseless or, before they've gone to a court. Uh, bail, bail is a weird right. one. Wait, so I got to pay all this money to to get out because I've done this already? Right. What? You know, right. and it's all based on how many charges you have. So it's all money you know, based you on you have money, a charge. you had money, would you be doing it to begin with? The, you know, the, how are you going to get yourself out of the situation? <laughs> <laughs> you have a bail based on how many charges you have. Well, so they have an incentive to just be like, oh, yeah, you have something in the trunk of your car. Burglary tools. Oh, we'll add that to the bail, <laughs> you, you know, sucker. <laughs> you know, a like, tire uh, iron is a burglary tool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would have thought, You could right? bust somebody's window in with this and steal their shit. Sure, leftover school Doesn't scissors. Doesn't everybody have a tire iron? <laughs> right, that's yeah, just right. it, right? <laughs> but, so, I, I guess, like, you know, if uh, if we, we, we sit there and talk about, like, justice, all right, so... What, what if you were to have, like, a, a, a sentient machine, right? We already talked about that with hemp and marijuana. Well, yeah. We could have them harvesting and growing. Right, but you so, so you, you, you have a sentient machine, <laughs> and the, the sentient machine does not want, want to consent to something, and the sentient machine is raped. You know, that, that, that does kind of come back to robot sex. And, I, I mean, I'm not sure if we have enough time to talk about actually it. Actually putting or, a robot in, 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 well, in I mean, like how, in, I mean, I think, that, like, I mean, well, I think a robot <laughs> could actually, like, you know, at that point, if it's sentient, could actually bring forth a case to to an arbiter, oh, right? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know. I don't know. Are they human? I don't know what is sentient. That's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do we have time to talk about sentience? Or uh, I, mean, I, don't know. I think we're, we're about out of time. Oh, man. <laughs> but we will get to it one of these days. Robot sex at the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> Robot sex at the Hilton, and have a good night, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>